You've been charged by indictment in count one of the indictment with murder in the first degree of Luke Hoyer, a first degree felony punishable by up to death. Madam Presiding Juror, have you in fact reached a verdict? In the District Court of El Paso County, Texas, 409th Judicial District, the State of Texas versus Daniel Villegas, number 940D09328. Verdict form B. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daniel Villegas, not guilty of. On the crime of malice murder, I sentence you to life in confinement without parole. On considering the death of another, I sentence you to 10 years in confinement consecutive or after. Count. This panel finds that the death penalty is appropriate, should be, and is hereby given for each of the four murders by the defendant. The media is the most powerful entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent. And that's power. Because they control the minds of the masses. A quote by Malcolm X who was an advocator in the civil rights movement. The media plays an important role, even more so in this d digital age, influencing millions of people who consume their programs. However, when falsely interpreted, it could lead to misinformation as they might not have all the evidence. For decades, the media has been allowed access to trials such as criminal lawsuits, and hearings. This provokes the question whether this practice should still continue for the sake of the freedom of the press. They say that the audience has the right to know, but to what extent? Should it even be legal? Do certain restrictions on what can be recorded according to courtroom etiquette vary depending on the seriousness of the trial, such as the contrast of an everyday trial to that of an impeachment? In other words, do different rules apply based on the nature of the trial, or do they remain unchanged despite the degree of offence? These are the questions this video attempts to answer. It has been said that the audience has the right to know, but how much? Should it even be legal? Sometimes. Courtroom might not have assigned regular court reporters employed on either a permanent or temporary basis. However, in any given case, the reporter and their crew must abide by the rules and regulations established by the Supreme Court. The act of breaching any of, the, of these guidelines would result in dire consequences and undesired complications. The First Amendment enforces the right for the public to know what's going on around them, whilst the Sixth Amendment states that every defendant has the right to a fair trial. An example of a conflict of interest between the two would be the media circus trial that took place in 1932, which starred Bruno Hauptmann, who received charges of the kidnapping and murder of the infant son of aviator Charles Lindbergh. Due to the presence of cameras at the trial on site, his convictions were ultimately overturned by the Supreme Court on the basis that camera coverage distracted those who partook in the trial, thus preventing Mr. Halpern himself from having a fair trial. Although there is some truth to this, it can also arguably be said from a public standpoint that live filmed trials allow its viewers to see for themselves that the judicial system shows no biasness and that defendants do indeed receive fair treatment. It also serves to remind the jury where their responsibilities lie and even prompt witnesses to testify and dissuade lying during a hearing. Another reason why the live recording of trials should perhaps be permitted is so that audiences can formulate their own opinions on the spot rather than based on information and allegations later released by multiple media outlets on the off chance that it might actually be proven false in the end. Thus, one can conclude that it is mainly in the public's interest to conduct a recorded trial despite the uncertainty of outcomes. Does the presence of the media affect the defendant's testimony? How does it influence people's opinions? 
This discussion dates back to as far as the first trial in history. However, it is a question that is still being asked today. Even more so in light of the ever looming digital age, when technology that continues to advance at a rapid pace is a huge influence to billions across the globe. In the light of the press, who would have been first in line to get a hold of the news, their posts or posts on various digital platforms such as YouTube and Instagram would invite commentators and, by doing so, stir up confusion amongst those jury members who sweep the news daily to be updated. With multiple news agencies re-spinning and essentially reposting different forms of the same story, it makes it difficult to pick out what they need and or which news post they should trust. For example, suppose a headline appeals court Tosses mother conviction in 2010 Anchorage Mall shooting is shown, even though a verdict has not yet been reached. In this case, it may lead to false information as the press should not decide on a sentence, despite having done ample research on the subject. It is said that by churning out attention-grabbing headlines in hopes of a of catching the reader's eye. It will lead to misleading data that is viewed by the masses, riling up confusion and most likely false panic. Thus, it is always important to keep in mind the choice of words used and to anticipate your audience reactions when writing up such a headline, and to understand that the ultimate decision lies within the hands of the judge and jury and not the media. What differs from an everyday trial in comparison to a case such as that of an impeachment? Different rules apply based on the nature of the trial hand, or do they remain unvaried in spite of the varying degrees of the offence? Examples of memorable trials are the O.J. Simpson trial in 1995, the Mark Zuckerberg trial in 2018, and President Donald Trump's impeachment. O.J. Simpson, who was acquitted for the death of his ex-spouse Nicole Brown Simpson and a friend who goes by the name of Ronald Goldman in the year 1995. Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, who was slapped with a lawsuit when the company he founded in 2003 came under fire for the lack of security, which resulted in breached privacy. And Donald Trump, who has been impeached twice due to the abuse of authority for personal interest and for obstructing Congress. This occurs by definition when a government body prosecutes an official for abusing their position within their respective organizations. Mark Zuckerberg's trial was held due to his company Facebook having been charged with the lack of data privacy enforcement and the lack of of fact-checking of political ads through which false information was spread and deliberately failing to prevent the publication of child pornography on its platform. Let's take a look at the video of the charges that he was presented with. Are users actually safe? Is Facebook being safe? Senator, I think Facebook is safe. I use it and my family use it and all the people I love and care about use it all the time. Why should we trust Facebook to make the necessary changes? We have made a lot of mistakes in running the company. Do you think the average consumer understands what they're signing up for? I don't think that the average person likely reads that whole document. The Facebook founder and CEO taking the hot seat for the first time, facing tough questions from over 40 U.S. senators. One of the primary concerns, Facebook's growing role in our elections. What is Facebook doing to prevent foreign actors from interfering in U.S. elections? One of my top priorities in 2018 um, is to get this right. One of my greatest regrets in running the company is that we were slow in identifying the Russian information operations in 2016. We expected them to do a number of more traditional cyber attacks, which we did identify and notify um, the campaigns that they were trying to hack into them, but we were slow at identifying the type of of new information operations. Swapping out his signature gray t-shirt and jeans for a suit, Zuckerberg remained stoic, sitting calmly for nearly five hours. We've seen the apology tours before. Your user agreement sucks. (laughs) 
The two days of congressional hearings called as a result of that controversial Cambridge Analytica data breach. Is Facebook keeping track of your phone calls and your text messages? Many now questioning whether their information is truly safe on the social network. Cambridge Analytica reportedly breached the profiles of tens of millions of users. The millennial billionaire first arrived in Washington on Monday, meeting privately with lawmakers and dodging questions from reporters. Mr. Zuckerberg, are you doing enough to protect your users? This week, 87 million Facebook users are receiving a notice on their feeds, informing them their personal data was shared with the political consulting firm. During the hearing, Zuckerberg took personal responsibility for the social network's failure to safeguard users' privacy. These trials present different issues, one on the pressing matters of the digital age, the other on the abuse of power in favor of personal gain, and another concerning murder. So far, the president of the One American News, Charles Herring, tells The Guardian that they will be, and I quote, providing wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the impeachment hearings. Thus, although an impeachment differs a lot in comparison to a regular trial, holding much more weightage, it is not conducted privately, and the media is permitted to cover such an event. Both will be filmed in the interest of the public, the same goes for any other trial out there. Therefore, we can always be sure that all forms of trials will receive the same amount of coverage despite the offence at hand. The regulations, witnesses, audience and verdict of the trials play a significant role in the outcome of any hearing. The media is the main medium by which live streams and footage of the events go through. Therefore, how the sequence of events is portrayed, be it digital or by print, it is absolutely critical for its viewers as it heavily impacts and influences public opinion. They bear an unsaid duty to present the news as truly and as fairly as it can possibly be. Its responsibility, in a sense, is as high as the judge and jury's role itself.